Oh, what a roll. That's solid. Awesome. Set up more, don't set up so much left with the driver. Be more 50-50 in your weight. Good speed control. Good roll. That's a great roll. Nice. Got it. Very nice. Ball just needs a, a different line. Very close. Tell you the roll, you're rolling it good. This is perfect technique that everyone should follow. It didn't break. It breaks to the right or just slightly. I think it's inside left lip. It is. Great. 
right butt. Tap in. Ah. Why the thing don't left? Alright, let's do another one. That's better. We do need that slightly, slightly stronger left hand with this. Okay. You may have already had it. Just to have a good turn. Wow. That's exactly what I want to see every time. And it's more body than hands. And you're asking yourself, if I'd really hit a ball, do I think that's the one I want? You just do your best guess. And then you say, oh, you know, I don't know, but I, I, I think that's going to be it. So that, and then you go with that. Trust it. Yep. I really do think your backswing's starting to get a little too long. softer and shorter backswing and then, then swing to your pose. Much better. Full commitment on this one. Full commitment. Oh man, that was a good stroke. That was solid. Pull it. My bad. Good stroke. That's good. Oh, very solid. Sir. Sir. Good 
your next putt's going to be tricky. Oh, Oh, golly, Chris. Great roll. I was aimed that way. I think we're just over-reading some of these. Can we look at your backswing up to the top of the, the backswing, starting from the three position? Do Grant first. basically rotates around a fairly stable spine axis. He's not lifting or dropping. He drops a little bit right there. Not a lot. But he does not drop until he gets to the top. His drop is, a, is part of his downswing. His left arm will hit right on the shoulder line there. I'm going to stop it there. And you, you actually start to do your drop if we look at the mountains in, in the background we can see how your head drops quite a bit now, the camera wasn't on a tripod, so it uh, you're going to see some movement, but but we're still going to be able to, to detect uh, a drop there. And it's not just a drop in the flexing of the knees you increase the tilt of your spine. Grant has a little bit of a drop, but he doesn't drop, he doesn't, he doesn't increase the tilt of his spine. He simply is dropping down more with his knee flex, but his spine angle has remained the same. So you're going to see his body drop lower but the spine angle does not tilt more during that drop. It's, it's basically he's, as that right knee un, starts to flex more, he'll drop a little bit, but he does not tilt more. You have a tilt in your drop as opposed to just letting the head get lower because of the right leg flexing. And so that little move is just an added complexity that can cause some inconsistencies. The other issue, in which we've addressed before, is getting that left arm on the chest line, on the shoulder line. And you're, you have a little bit above that now. The angle from your shoulder through your elbow joint is here and um, Grant is a little bit lower so you're getting your elbow just a little bit high that right elbow just a little bit high here's the right forearm wrist to elbow position wrist to elbow position So you're just getting that that hand set just a little bit uh, high there. So um, we had worked on that, and you'd gotten that down, and that getting that more of a connected feeling. But you're getting a little bit disconnected at the top, and uh, we'd like to work on that some more. I want to make one more observation about your backswing movement. I'm Let's uh, look at the knee flex of the right knee during the swing. Both of you start with uh, flex in the knees. I'm going to take Grant up to the top. Right there's the end of his back swing. And he still has maintained uh, some knee flex. I'm going to take you to the top. And 
you basically almost have a straight leg. So you have very little knee flex in your right knee at the top of your swing. Stuck and tilt is known as a swing method that allows the right knee to extend in the backswing. That the right knee has to incrementally ex do extension while the left knee is doing flexion. Grant is doing that, but he does not reach, particularly with his irons, he does not reach full extension um, at the end of the backswing. He is more extended than he started, but he does not reach full extension, and you do. One needs to ask, uh, can we go beyond an ideal knee flex? Maybe the ideal knee flex for you is not full extension of the right knee. We have an ex we have a method of extending during the backswing, but we do not reach full extension. Let's assume for a moment that there is an ideal amount of flex that you do want to arrive at in your right knee. And, but once you arrive there, you're basically finished and complete with the backswing. If you go beyond that, what might occur? Uh, one, you'll have an overswing with the hands and arms. You're, you're, as you give yourself additional time to put more extension in the right knee, that gives the left arm more time to lift higher, more time for the right elbow to lift higher, more time for the shaft of the club to go uh, beyond parallel. We've been trying to control the, uh, the separation in your upper body by focusing on the arms and the, and the elbows. I'm wondering if we also need to be focused a little bit on controlling uh, and monitoring the right knee and, and have some feelings of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing and not go to a full extension. Right now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put this in the category of a theory that I want you to help test with me but I'm now suspicious that possibly you have too much extension in your right leg and that we need to maintain some flex there. 